Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you have any questions for our guests, there are many ways you can contact the show. You can post a question on our wall on Facebook, Skype us, send us a tweet on Twitter to at The Organic View, or you can contact me directly at June Stoyer. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. In this special series called The Neonicotinoid View, my guest co-host Tom Theobald and I will be joined by Sandra Romero, the Commissioner of the Board of Health in Thurston County in the state of Washington. We're going to talk about recent efforts to protect pollinators and also what the response has been. So I would first like to welcome to the show my special guest co-host, Mr. Tom Theobald. Good afternoon, Tom. Good afternoon, June. And our guest today, Commissioner Sandra Romero. Good afternoon, Uh, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Commissioner, could you please share with the audience a little bit about yourself and how long you've been the Commissioner of the Board of Health? Okay. I have been in Thurston County where we live. We are a three-member Board of County Commissioner and Board of Health. We're the same. So I have been a commissioner for almost five years. Uh, Prior to that, I was in the state legislature for 12 years. And so that about is my bio on public life. (laughs) (laughs) But while in the legislature, maybe 15, 20 years ago, we started hearing about colony collapse among bees. And legislature took some efforts like making cutter bees uh, exempt from sales tax as a way to deal with the situation. But as we all know, honeybee colonies are declining, and so other efforts are needed. Sandra, I've read as much of the record as I can, and it's my understanding that this particular issue was initiated by a letter from the Olympia Beekeepers Association last year directed to your Agricultural Advisory Committee, and they were asking that restrictions be placed on the neonicotinoid family of pesticides namely that they be classified as restricted-use pesticides, which would mean that it would require a pesticide applicator's license. And the letter that I saw from the Agricultural Advisory Committee says that the majority didn't support that request, but apparently the commissioners have reviewed that situation and have agreed with Olympia Beekeepers Association, and you have requested of the state help in implementing those restrictions. Can you just review for the listeners what has gone on and and where we stand? It's been reported as a request for a ban, and it doesn't appear to be that at all. No, it's not a ban. And, you know, bees don't stay in one area. You know, they travel, and you would know that much more than I do. So we thought it very appropriate to contact our Washington State Department of Agriculture, you know, requesting that they take action, well, immediate action, actually, uh, to license, to restrict the application of that class of neonicotinoids, which I have trouble saying, (laughs) Um, (laughs) to uh, persons that are licensed with our Washington State Department of Ag. I mean, we fully admit that there are a lot of factors involved, you know, including mites, viruses, poor nutrition, etc. But studies, uh, I think the Xerxes Society study for one, you know, are pointing to those types of plants containing the neonics. So we sent a request. We got a um, a notice back that they took our request seriously, the Department of Agriculture. And just today, a day before, you know, they had to respond, we got a letter back saying primarily that there's just not enough science to restrict the uh, ornamental application. 
and they cited that there were like 61 factors that have been associated with colony collapse disorder and that they're not be, they're not able to pinpoint one particular cause. So what the Department of Agriculture uh, did was they solicited assistance from and expertise from the honey bee pollinator experts at Washington State University, which is our land grant college in our state. And according to their staff, and they've done laboratory experiments with the neonicotinoids insects, and they believe, you know, and they say there are lethal and you know and sublethal to bees, depending on the level exposure. So they go into saying that a sublethal adverse effect includes impaired learning behavior, short and long-term memory loss, reduced fecundity, altered foraging behavior, and motor activity of the bees. But then they go on to say that other pesticides, including those miticides used by beekeepers for control of the varroa mite, also have the same adverse effects on bees. So they don't, you know, they're finding that there is great disagreement in the scientific community. So we're not really excited about this letter that we received. But one thing, if you want to look at the glass is half full, it has caught their attention and they're going to take some step. And I don't know, you might think they're baby steps. But they're uh, going to urge the EPA for a reassessment of those insecticides. They are also independent of any required changes by EPA, requests that restraints of the neonicotinoid insecticides voluntarily add pollinator protection statements to their labels, requests that our land-grant college, Washington State University, include presentations on pollinator protection in their pesticide licensing recertification courses and provide technical assistance to pesticide applicators. And they've also said they would provide public outreach to consumers by assisting the major retail trade organizations in creating point-of-sale brochures on pollinator protection, and then encourage the news media to print timely articles on pollinator protection in their home and garden sections. The uh, Bud Hover, the director of the Department of Ag, further stated that he was going to look for ways to fund and sponsor a study that could help him more clearly evaluate the risks of these insecticides. Is this the end of this issue for the county commissioners? Are you satisfied with these steps that are proposed? or No, we're not do you really have plans satisfied. For more? We just got the letter today. We have uh-huh. not had a chance to strategize what our next steps are. I'm glad we've got it on people's radar screen, at least elevated a little bit, but... Hey, the news reached New York, and mm-hmm. personally, Commissioner, I am very happy to hear what you're saying because it means that there is a lot of awareness that Tom and I have been working at doing, or at creating rather, and the fact that there's a response, that there's a conversation, means that action is going to take place. How long it takes is a different story, but at least the conversation has begun. Yeah, and that's kind of my first take on this too. And I had run into someone at an event that worked for our Department of Ag, and they said they took our request very seriously. Now, you I would said have, in your letter that you were uh, going to encourage the other counties to join you in this effort. Have you done that, and has there yes, been Yes, we response? have brought that up, and we don't know how many other counties have written letters at this time. We've also done, been uh, interviewed on statewide television. You know, it's just such an effort to keep it up. We also sent a copy of our letter that we sent to the Washington State Department of Ag to 
our three congressional members, or three of our four congressional members. So we're working it. You know, when you have 61 factors, they're saying, and everyone's pointing to each other, <laughs> we really do need more science. Uh, just Well, I, if I can just be the devil's advocate. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine for it by that. They're... Uh, there's an abundance of science, and the difference of opinion is what the causative factor is. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a strong sentiment in, in the scientific community that it's the effect of these systemic pesticides that is exacerbating many of these 61 factors, and that's part of the the issue mm-hmm. under discussion here. I think the fact that you're taking so many steps especially to educate consumers. The point-of-sale pamphlets are a fantastic idea. Isn't that wonderful? All of the things that you just shared with our audience are a wonderful initiative, and I applaud you for all of your effort. I look forward to having you come back and share with our audience an update at some point in the future, because I think what you're doing is really setting a precedent for other counties, not just in the state of Washington, but in other counties in the state of Washington, but for all states. I think it's tremendous. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. I really appreciate the fact that you took time out of your schedule to come on the show and talk to me and Tom as well as all of our listeners. Well, yes, I I've, I've worked closely with our own county commissioners and I know how stressful that job is and how many things you have to uh, deal with. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Great. And I, you know, I wish you luck and if you ever have find out that other counties, other states have taken even greater steps, we'd like to know. It would be encouraging to us. <laughs> okay? We'd be happy sure to thing. do so. Thank you. You're welcome. And folks, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone.